Hey guys, it's me Lisa ASMR. I know this is a horrible angle, but I really don't care because I'm about to drive and it's raining and I love the sound of rain. Well, I might wait a few minutes to drive because I have a short drive to go to. Do some sun reflector stuff while the rain goes. I was going to do a video out by the water like I do with my tapping videos, but obviously the weather says no. And I was going to go anyways and do a video anyways, but I kept reading those like, I think they were called blue lightning bolts I told you guys about, where a lightning bolt can um, be 10 miles in front and 10 miles behind a thunderstorm, and people kept dying, so I'm not trying to die. i got to stay alive so I can make more videos for you guys. Because it's raining, Lisa. You're literally being held up by sunglasses and my uh, thermos. My mermaid thermos. just drove by. Probably was like, what is she doing? Oh! Hey, Ohio! <laughs> oh. So my dinner went really well. It was nice. Oh, did you know that when you're in a car, if your car gets hit by lightning, you need to stay away from your doors, because then you'll get hurt if you're leaning on your doors. <sighs> you're going to inside the car. I forget the reason why. I read that when I was reading one of those lightning bolt stories. You know what? I bought one of these. Well, now it doesn't even matter, because, uh... My phone's too good to use. But, I'll tap away. It's so hot. I don't trust people anymore. Oh, that's sad. That's the type of world we live in now. My nails keep breaking. My feet and these shoes are starting to hurt. Gotta lean them out. There we go. Actually, since I'm not driving, I'm gonna 
you can't, whoops, that was loud. Cause you can't even see the rain off of the moonroof. Sunroof, I don't even know the difference. I don't even think there is a difference. I think people just like to prefer one name over the other. But if you know the difference, let me know. Cause I've tried Googling and understanding and I just don't. I just called it a sunroof when I was selling cars. Waiting for my friend to get home so I can tell her what happened last night. It was so bad, you guys. Technically this morning. It was so like it's so it was so unnecessarily bad. But it's one of those stories where I'm just gonna keep it um, to myself because I don't want people to negatively think negatively about certain people. One person I really don't care about, but another person I do. So I'm gonna be respectful. Of course, people are in the park right beside me. There's so many freaking parking spaces open, and you're gonna go right beside me. Oh, John Bauer socks. I know how much you love page turning, and I have a book in here. Ugh. Let me see if I can get it. Use my sledgehammer. Yeah, I don't know. Did I tell you guys I found a sledgehammer in my car? It's underneath my seat. <laughs> and, uh, I have Scully still in my car, so I'm sure I look like I'm a serial killer. <laughs> and then, um... So I'm curious. You know road rage videos, like, they go viral all the time. If someone came up to my car because they're these road rage people. And I'm not the type of person who's gonna f fight or hurt anybody. I will not do that because there's no point in my mind. There's no point. I'm gonna defend myself for sure. Like I'm not gonna let someone like hurt me. So instead I'll lock my car doors before they can come up on me and do anything, make sure my windows are up. But if someone happened to come up on me during a road rage event, Where's that water sound coming from? Weird. I don't know. And I showed them my sledgehammer and be like, you need to back off. I wouldn't get charged for anything, right? Because I'm defending myself. I'm in my own property. And they're coming at me. I think I'd only get charged if I actually hit them, right? Someone who knows, like, law stuff and tell me, oh, why do I have, what is that? chocolate come from my goodness oh this feels good i have my car off because it's counting as idling if it's on and i'm not moving against my discount so i'm like ah. evil. so evil why are these people still here it's raining you have your cars on you have your headlights on you have your wipers on just go home it's gonna be raining for us tonight This is kind of like, I mean, this is not technically page flipping. This is like, I don't know, what do you call this? I mean, technically it's like flipping, but not fully, you know? Oh, let me not have that showing. <gasps> oh, this is Lauren's book. She's already mad at me, so what does it matter? Cause I knew someone got me the Kite Runner book, but I didn't remember bringing it into my car, so I was wondering. All right, people, stop coming here. Just leave. It's my good little fan. My hair's blowing in the wind. What's it? Oh my, oh, goodness gracious. What am I doing with myself? Holy smokes. All right, 
one day this week, I am going to clean out my car. I'm gonna do it. I am seriously going to do it. Oh no. You know, I need to read this book. One of my coworkers, when I was reading car sales, um, was cleaning out the stuff and there's like a whole box of books and he's like, oh, do you want any? I looked through it and this one kind of jumped out at me. Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Alander. Have not read it yet, so let's read it together. Oh, it belonged to a girl named Madison. These pages are old. Oh, it's for Christopher. Um, we don't need to read it. Acknowledgements. Chapter 1. I stood perfectly still, looking up at the house and the dark sky beyond it. A band of mist drifted away from the moon, making way for the next set of clouds, what I hoped would be the picturesque backdrop I've been waiting for. The camera, a 25-year-old Nikon FM2N, 30 bucks at a garage sale, waited patiently on the tripod. I didn't know how long I'd been outside. It felt like hours, although it was probably like a subject in one of those science experiments where they tell you to ring a bell after an hour, and most people make it for like 12 minutes. For a split second, I thought about giving up for the night. There, are always there was always tomorrow. But suddenly, everything around me seemed to get one shade brighter. The moon came pouring through the wispy haze of vapor that looked like a tattered veil drape behind the house. In other words, it was perfect. Why do people keep coming? We're in a thunderstorm, y'all. Well, so far, no thunder. Photographs taken in very low light need a long exposure, longer than most people, me included, can stand still. So I used a little device with a squeezy bulb, um, heard the click as the shutter lifted, and started counting when I reached 10. I let go of the bulb, the shutter closed. I repeated this a few more times, at one point adjusting the focal length so that the house itself was out of focus and the giant oak in the front yard was sharply defined. I didn't take very many pictures when you use real film and pay for it yourself. You just can't shoot as much as you want. After a few minutes, the clouds had melted together and the effect was back to being kind of blah. Even a house like ours, an ancient one with carved shingles, creaky overhangs, and an enormous stained glass bay window needed the right setting. Now that my attention was diverted from the um, photographs, the spookiness of the scene hit me. Suddenly, standing outside all by myself, an easy target for any random maniac seemed very foolish. Ooh, you zipping on out of here. You must not be from around these parts. <laughs> my breathing turned shallow and my hands trembled as I, snooped, as I snapped the lens cap into place. I was tempted to grab the whole setup and run for the house, but something inside me refused to give in to the fear. So with slow, deliberate motions, I removed the camera from the tripod and unscrewed the little plate that holds it in place. I slipped the camera strap around my neck and started winding the remote shutter around my hand. Snap! I swung my head up around, looking for the source of the noise. Deep breath. It was just a bird, or a squirrel, or one of the cats my sister insists on feeding, even though it's going to give our mother a hissy fit. No pun intended. Shuffle, shuffle. Here, kitty, I said softly. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Snap, pop. Present yourself, kitty, I said a little louder. A head popped out from behind the trunk of an oak tree. My heart did three backflips before I recognized the honey-colored hair of my little sister, Casey. Present yourself, Casey asked. Sergeant Meow reporting for duty. I tried to think of something biting to say, but I still caught my breath. I swatted her on the arm and swallowed a huge gulp of air. She stared at the camera for a few seconds. Her lips... Sorry, the pages got caught together. Her lips pressed together and almost frowned that had recently become her default expression. She shifted her weight from one foot to the other and back. Her fingers lightly playing with the sleeves of her mom's ancient Saray high t-shirt that she inherited as a pajama top. How long have you been out here? Casey shrugged, looking at her watch. A while. What time is it? 3.16. Seriously? I've been outside for three hours? I guess I'd rock that bell ringing experiment. 
Casey trails along behind me all the time when I'm out taking pictures. She stands near the camera and watches what I'm watching, but she claims she doesn't get it. Doesn't know why something's worth photog photographing. I've tried to teach her, but she had, she's actually kind of hopeless. When we started, her pictures looked like bad vacation snapshots. And after five exhausting hours, they were worse. Because now she was trying to be artsy. A lot of blobs and blurbs and, and blurs and pictures with no life of their own. I told her not to worry that maybe her true talents would emerge when she was older. What else could I tell her? That I can't imagine the feeling of walking through the world without being able to see the lines and shapes and balance of seemingly normal ob objects? That when I'm at school I feel lonely for my camera as if it were a friend, which I don't have any of at school? So it makes sense. So, what are you taking pictures of? I don't see anything, she said. I would explain, but it's 3 a.m., I said. I'll show you when I develop the film, okay? She nodded and yawned. I took another look up at the house. There was a soft glow peeking through the branches that shaded our bedroom windows. Oh, crap, I said. Case, which room is that light coming from? If Mom was wandering around turning on lights, then she knew Casey wasn't inside, and then it was a pretty short road to figuring out I was gone too, and that meant trouble. No putting herself in or Casey in strange and or potentially dangerous situations to take pictures was the latest incarnation of the rule that had once upon a time been, don't go on the roof. With every fresh misstep, the rule evolved. No taking pictures of retail merchandise, no taking pictures on other people's property, don't use Casey as a decoy to get photos of people who don't want to be photographed. I was fairly sure that pretty soon it would be just put the camera down, sit on the sofa, and don't move. Okay, good. These people finally left. <sighs> Even with a parental tantrum looming, the photographer and me couldn't ignore something so cool looking. It's as if... Um, sorry. It's like the way a hunter will see an exotic animal and want its head on the wall. Only less gross. When I see something visually interesting, I want to take a picture of it so badly, it's almost like a craving. Instinctively, I uncap the lens and raise the camera to my eye. It's not my room, Casey said. It's you, not yours either. Set up the tripod, I said, waving to the spot where it lay on the ground, then I turned my attention to the light. It was a soft glow, pale gold, and Casey was right. It wasn't coming from either of our rooms. It didn't actually seem to be originating from inside the house at all. I couldn't wait for the tripod. I held the camera as steady as possible, bending my knees, embracing my body, and taking a deep breath and holding it, and pressed down on the shutter. After a few seconds, I let go, then took another picture, and another. Ready? Casey said, handing me the little plate to screw on to the camera. As quickly as I could, I attached the camera to the tripod, then put my eye to the viewfinder. The light was gone. We waited a few more minutes, but it never returned. Finally, sorry. Finally, I capped the lens and folded up the tripod. Casey watched me glancing up every few seconds to see if the light was back. Her eyes met at one point and I had to swallow hard. What was it? Where had it come from? Why did it turn off? Neither of us asked the questions out loud, but we were both thinking them. We, watched silent we marched silently through the side yard. Fortunately, the October nights were cool enough that the many, many ginormous spiders that usually populated the part of the yard were gone. I walked in front, though, just in case. Casey was a freaker outer, and we didn't need any blood-curdling screams advertising our location. I turned back to check on her, stopping so abruptly that she ran right into me. Spider? She asked, panic in her voice. I shook my head. I was looking past her into the front yard at the spot where I'd been standing just seconds earlier. It was lit up by the same faint, same faint glow we'd seen in the tree, and it actually seemed to be growing. What? Casey whispered. Uh, if my sister saw it, she'd spare us. I looked right at her and smiled. Nothing. Out of the corner of my eye, I got a sense of the light growing larger, and then I realized it wasn't getting bigger. It was getting closer. It was following us. You know, I might have been a, might have seen a little spider, I said. Go. Now. Move. Casey said, pushing on my back. I let her go ahead of me through the back door as I cast one final glance behind us. There was no glow. Either it had disappeared or it hadn't rounded the corner yet. 
We slipped into stealth mode to climb the stairs from the foyer to the second floor, skipping the third, eighth, and eleventh steps, all the way, all of which squeaked loudly enough to wake the dead, and then Casey waved a goodbye and ducked into her room. I set the tripod on the floor and the camera on the dresser, and the exhaustion overwhelmed me. I changed into a long t-shirt and crawled into bed, telling myself I had just been a swarm of curious fireflies. I mean, it had to be. There wasn't any other explanation. The last thing I saw before I fell asleep was the faintest tr trace of glow in the spiny branches of the oak tree outside my window. Curious fireflies, I told myself sleepily, so curious that they'd find a way to follow us upstairs without actually coming into the house. Just trying to figure out how long chapter two is. Oh, just ten pages. Eleven pages. Ooh. It is hot! Old creaky book. Chapter 2. Back left corner of the library, underneath the study desks. You'd have to be willing to sit on the floor, but that's a small price to pay for the perfect instead of class hangout. Zero student traffic. Lots of legroom and complete invisibility to the librarian. Excuse me, Alexis. Tragically, it was not invisible to the principal. Oh, as a female principal, maybe they should have said that so I knew how to talk. Sorry! Oh, wait. No, that's right. What class are you cutting this fine fall day, Miss Warren? Ooh, please don't be looking at me while I'm reading this book. Thank you. I stood up out of the library corral and grabbed my bag. History, but technically I'm not cutting a class. The corner- oh. It was a female principal. Dang it. The corner of Mrs. Ames' mouth twisted up into an almost smile as she cleared her throat. <clears throat> this is promising. This was, my day hasn't taken a nosedive yet, so this is kind of amusing. Not. I've had it up to here. When you spend as much time around the principal as I do, you get to know the idiosyncrasies. And why does history not qualify as a class? As she spoke, Mrs. Ames adjusted the straw beach hat she'd worn for hat day. Day one of the officially most annoying time of the entire school year. Homecoming week. The hat clashed horribly with her beige blazer, but I knew way better than to comment. We walked out of the library as nice as it would be to pretend we were having a pleasant stroll. I knew where we headed, we, where we were headed, and I knew that the phone number she would be calling when we got there. And I knew that meeting my mother would be pulled out of to talk to her daughter's principal again, and I knew exactly which classroom to report to for Saturday detention, and not the fun 80s movie kind of Saturday detention, the incredibly boring kind that makes you want to stab yourself in the eye with a pencil. At least then you get to leave. I sighed. <sighs> They're in the gym, decorating for the banquet. There was a bright side to this whole thing. It was that I still got to miss decorating the stupid gym for the stupid alumni homecoming banquet. Another detention, big deal. I hadn't had a free Saturday since August, but Mrs. Ames is no dummy. Aw, she said, and she, star she stared right into my eyes. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we sweep this incident under the rug and get you back to class so you can help out? I shot her a look. She gave me an innocent smile. We star So we started down the hallway. Um... Sorry, someone just messaged me Jesus Christmas. <laughs> like, and Jesus with a G, not like Jesus as in God's Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought it was funny because I've never heard that before. Um, I don't even know where the lens is. Oh, there you are, I think. Um, bum -bum. Where was I? We started down the hallway that led to the gym. How many times is this now, Alexis? This month? This year. I puffed air out my mouth to blow the wispy pink hairs away from my face. <sighs> Twelve, Alexis, she said. Twelve skip classes that I know of, not to mention a number of other small incidents. The way she said small incidents was a very clear reminder that some of the incidents weren't small. I personally don't see what's so criminal about giving honest feedback to a student teacher who could clearly quit while she's ahead or having an anti-fashion show outside the gym during the choir's annual fashion show, but I guess that's just me. Let me tell you, Miss Warren, there's been some pressure to avoiding hanging handing out Saturday detentions like lollipops. There's a big trend in the district towards suspensions right now. 
Suspension. I dug my fingernails lightly into the palm of my hand. Somehow, suspension sounded way worse than detention. Detention happens to everybody. Suspension, though, that's for sociopaths. Sociopaths. Ugh. I wasn't 100% sure I was ready to take that leap. She sighed as we started walking down, walking again. You know, I think you have a lot of potential, Alexis. Your test scores are very high, and it's clear that you can do well if you want to. She went off into a lecture about how nobody can make my choices but me. I nodded, but I was only halfway listening. The word suspension was still buzzing around in my head like an angry bee. We reached the gym. The entire history class was spread out along the gym, working on stupid, meaningless tasks for the stupid, meaningless banquet, and every head turned to look at us. I held my chin high and shot a couple of disdainful looks. The kids I made eye contact with and went back to work. Mrs. Anderson, who happens to be the dumbest teacher ever, and I'm not just saying that, it's true. It took her four tries to pronounce... Oh, shoot, I'm not going to pronounce this name. Aborginis? Or Aborgines? I don't know. Came hustling over. Well, what we... What have we here? She said, Alexis, what a nice surprise. I assume you're on your way to the main office. Mrs. Ames frowned. No. Miss Warren and I have just been chatting, so I hope you'll excuse her tardiness. I'm going to leave her in your capable hands, Mrs. Anderson. She said capable hands a lot like she'd said small incidences. Incidents. Wonderful, Mrs. Anderson replied. Mrs. Ames looked down at me. I'm sure you'll put your best effort into your work today, Alexis. Oh, totally. But Mrs. Anderson wasn't ready to let the torment end. She clapped her hands together. Alexis, you must have forgotten that today is hat day. Silly girl, pink hair isn't a hat. Luckily, we have some backups. She turned and called over her shoulder. Jeremy, bring that box over here. A boy who'd been assembling really ugly centerpieces out of fake flowers and wicker baskets reluctantly picked up a medium-sized cardboard box and started towards us. No way. I would wear a dancing banana fruit basket on my head before I would let one of those disgusting things touch my scalp. Jeremy tripped and dropped the box. Hats went flying everywhere. Nice. How thoughtful of you. Oh. How thoughtful of you, Mrs. Anderson, Mrs. Ames said as Jeremy crawled around gathering up the baseball caps and colorful sombreros. But I don't think Alexis is the hot day type. Case closed. Mrs. Ames headed out to the gym. Mrs. Anderson turned to me, all the peppy rah-rah gone from her voice. What do you... What to do with you, dear Alexis? She said, scanning the room. Why don't you... As long as I get f far away from Mrs. Anderson, I'd be fine. Go help Pepper. Pepper? She's not even in this class, I protested. Mrs. Anderson looked triumphant. Well, Alexis, all of the cheerleaders are helping out today, so why don't you check in with Peppa and tell her you'll be thrilled to do anything she needs. Thrilled is not the word I'd choose. It's not straight. Pepper said. Her flaming orange hair was mostly tucked under a ridiculous floppy magenta beret, but one stray lock looped down and covered her left eye. She glared at me with the red eye. I heaved a huge sigh. Pepper, I swear, the banner is straight. We'd been on the opposite sides of the plastic Welcome Home alumni banner for probably five minutes, and every time we had it in place, Pepper backtracked and decided it wasn't good enough. It doesn't look right, she whined. That's because you're looking at it with only one eye, I said. You have no depth perception. She sniffed and rolled her eye. <sighs> Let's get something clear. Pepper Lard is a cheerleader. As such, she is used to bouncing in place and holding her arms in the air for long periods of time. I, Alexis, am not a cheerleader. In fact, I'm sort of an anti-cheerleader. So while Pepper is out there working on her biceps and triceps and glutes, I'm slumping under the bleachers with the rest of the outcasts. But no way was I going to admit to Pepper that I couldn't take it. I dropped my half of the banner. Forget it, I said. My arms burned as blood poured back through the veins. This is moronic. I'm not going to do this. We have to, Pepper said, and you have to help or I'll tell Mrs. Anderson. Oh, she definitely would, and then I'd have to face Mrs. Ames for the second time that day, and her goodwill and ability to see a shred of potential in me would probably be all used up. I settled for some doing some arm stretches and making a very angry noise in Pepper's direction. You freak, she said. This was not a new concept to me. You and your stupid pink hair. Not new either. And your whole freaky family. That part was new. 
because whatever forces separated Pepper and me in the suffocating world of Surrey High School, one thing bond us together, and that was family. Sisters, to be specific. Casey had been best friends with Pepper's sister, Mimi, since fourth grade. They were the kind of friends of, who argue more often than they don't, but they were still glued together. Grow up, I said. Leave my family alone. Pepper stood up straighter. As long as your schizoid sister leaves Mimi alone, I'm fine with that arrangement. Confusion must have overtaken annoy annoyance in my expression. Her arm, Pepper said. Mimi had broken her arm at our school, or at our house, about a month before, but it was an accident. She'd been running down the hall and slipped on a rug as she turned into Casey's room. That kind of thing just happens. Although, come to think of it, we hadn't seen much of Mimi lady, lately. <laughs> lady. <laughs> yeah, so... Your sister broke my sister's arm, Pepper said. Oh, please. Mimi told me the whole story. She won't tell her mom because she says she feels bad for Casey, but I think she's afraid because your little sister is a violent maniac. Okay, so I'm not popular and friendly, and I don't have any friends. But I wasn't about to let someone who stood there and talked smack about my baby sister, who, yes, is sensitive, but no, is not a violent maniac. I took a step toward Pepper. She flinched, but she didn't back away. Face it, Alexis. Casey's a whack job. She narrowed her eyes. All my sister tried to do was touch one of her stupid dolls. Pepper went on ranting, but I wasn't paying attention. I didn't back down, but suddenly I didn't feel like fighting about it either. Because that one word, dolls, seemed too right. A lot of people are avid collectors of things you or I would consider stupid, or at least silly rocks with googly eyes glued to them and seashells for feet. Candles shaped like animals or mythical creatures. For Casey, it was dolls. I don't even remember when it started. Years ago, every... Well, uh, years ago, long enough for Casey, using her meager allowance every dime or of birthday or Christmas money, and who knows what else, to amass dozens of dolls. And if my sister were capable of hurting someone, it would be to protect her precious collection. Pepper grabbed her end of the banner. Let's just do this so I can get away from you, she said. The feeling is mutual, I said. We hoisted the banner once again. Stop! It's perfect! Said a voice. I turned to see who had spoken. Oh, great. Megan Wiley. Poised self-assured, co-captain of the varsity cheerleading, even though she's just a sophomore. Oh, and my own personal nemesis. More on that in a sec. Studied our sign, then sauntered over with a hammer and nails. She hammered both sides into a wall without another word. Here's the deal. I speak up in class. I get sent to the office. Office. Megan speaks up in class. She's a strong, assertive model student. I post a few flyers saying that the vending machines on school property are a sign that our school district has sold out to the corporate industrial establishment. I get, what else? Saturday detention? Megan starts a campaign to serve local foods in our lunchroom. Oh, and could we please maybe get rid of the soda machines? Okay, this person is literally like you're signing, and I don't feel comfortable doing this anymore. <laughs> Okay, so let me just uh, find something and put this. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna doggy ear it. This thing is old. I feel like not doggy earing it would be like a disrespect to the book. Much love, guys. Have a great day.